Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. We'll pick up where we uh, where we left off, and we'll, we're going to get to the new song, um, too. But um, there are some... Now, we, we talk often, though. Uh, yeah. Even though we don't see each other often, we talk often. And uh, just checking in uh, ministry-wise, hey, are you feeling this? Right. Are you going through this? Or, you know, and for whatever reason, uh, God is pretty much parallel our, our, our ministries together. And I think that's why we're so connected in, in that, yeah. you know, in that way. <clears throat> and you're able to help me reach places that I can't reach Um like for um, you know, the the sexually trafficked women, the the, the battered women, I can't yeah. as a man, I can't get yeah. you know uh, involved in that yeah. to the degree where uh, something could be misconstrued or something could be sure. But through you, I can support your ministry, right? Uh, or partner up with your ministry, yeah. And then therefore, uh, I'm able to do that through the the radio. So I'm. And, and Lord knows I've always had a, a you know, a heart, I just, yeah. a heart for hurting women. Yes. And, Good. you know, some, some, you know, and, and it's in a, it's in a spiritual way, not a, you know, I'm just, because right. I know boundaries and, and yeah. I respect those boundaries and, and I keep those boundaries around my wife as well. Sure. Uh, for, you know, different things, but, um, but I've always, always had a, place for you know mm-hmm. just women should be worshipped that's good because jesus does too he's got right. a heart for hurting right. women and when i say worship not you know in place of god or whatever i mean they should just be really respected yeah. and, and held yeah you know uh those that are uh truly godly women right uh, you know there's some crazy people out there just like we're crazy <laughs> but i mean <laughs> You know, everybody's got the we have, folks. Yeah, we have that too. You know. Male or female. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the, um, in your station, yeah. you have different meetings. You have counseling going on. You have, uh, you did worship things sometimes. But there's something I want to talk about if you'll, if you'll talk about it with me. And that's, okay. that's uh, you told me one time you were, casting out demons over there and I, and look i i believe in that we're gonna I, go there yeah i understand that <laughs> okay but before before we get to that i remember yeah. a story and you can correct me because I, i'm just going off of memory here and i might not be right okay but i think you were performing somewhere at a coffee house or something or something somewhere and there was a lady curled up at you and, and oh i and was working, working with my friend's okay. refuge of light okay in a coffee house yeah yeah that's several years ago and we may have shared this one other time on air i, I think we might have I yeah think. and there For those was who don't, who i was heard. singing i was rehearsing in the front of the building um for an event we were going to have and um my back was to the front door and all of a sudden this woman screaming at me um and so it, it completely startled me i turned mm-hmm. around and i saw there was a woman holding uh Y'all know the crosses that say Jesus is Lord, mm-hmm. the wooden crosses that people make. Um, she had picked up the one they had in the window and was waving at me and screaming and saying, he is not Lord, he is not Lord. And um, I thought it was a joke. I mean, I was, yeah. I, it scared me to death yeah. because I didn't see her coming, but I thought it was a joke. I was honestly looking around to see if somebody was pulling a prank on me. And quickly I realized it was not a prank. And I said, what, sh-? I thought enough to say, what's your name? And when I did, her demeanor changed. And she told me her name. All the other, my other friends were in the back of the building. Um, and she would just start up hollering at me again. So they began to walk forward. They thought somebody had come in that was a friend of mine and we were just cutting up in the yeah. front of the building. And it was Missy. Yeah. co-founder of Refuge of Light 
she comes down the hallway and is mouthing to or looking at me and I say, call the police. <laughs> <laughs> I mouth to her, call the police. Yeah. Um, but it took me about, oh, 10 or 15 minutes to realize she was demonically possessed. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Hunter, we've talked about this often. I was raised, uh, that is not something I was raised to, right. to see, to understand. Theologically, I was not, I mean, you know, let's be honest. We all read it in the word, mm -hmm. but I think there's a disconnect. Like we don't understand it actually happens today. Right. And um, she had, one of the other ladies came out and tried to give her some water. She would only take bottled water. Um, and there were a couple of comments from her. We were like, what are you, you know, what are you doing? And she would very mockingly, with a kind of a wicked grin, say, oh, I'm just hanging out with Jesus people, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, she said she was going to hang out for a while. So she went and she laid on the couch. This is a public place, a public coffee shop. And she went and sat on the couch. Her eyes never left me. There were now other people in the room. So a lot of my friends had come in and everybody was positioned in different places of the building praying. Nobody was doing anything. I could just see they were praying. Some were crying. I was shaking because I was so startled, startled, my heart rate had gotten up, up. and um, I remember the passage of scripture about David playing the harp yeah. for Saul and the evil spirit would leave. So I turned around and I went back to the sound system and it was like the Lord was saying, just sing. So I picked a song off my resurrection album called There Is A Name and it talks about the name of Jesus, yeah. Yeshua. Um, and the minute it started playing, she began to, like an animal, literally, and I'm not exaggerating, uh, flipping on a couch. Her rear end would be in the air like a dog, mm. um, and, but her head never left, her eyes never left me. Like I was her central focus. And so I, I started singing the song, you know, there is a name. And the minute I get to the part that's, uh, talking about, you know, he's Jesus to us, Yeshua. Um, she starts screaming, you know, for me to turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, which I did not do. And you know that, I mean, my, y'all, my voice was shaking there, you know, I was just in this place of what in the world is going on. And um, when the music stopped in in my heart i'm remembering something corey ten boom said in one of her books and to the lord i'm going well lord either i believe everything i've been preaching to everybody else or i'm a phony right. and so i put the microphone down and began to walk towards her and as soon as I started walking towards her, she sat up straight on the couch and she goes, oh, it's you, it's you. And in an instant, the song, or not the song, but the story actually of the demoniac running to the feet of Jesus yeah. and worshiping him. I was reading that tonight, last night, because that's part of the boat ride song we're about to release is right. that moment. Um, I knew in that moment, she saw that spirit in her saw the spirit of Christ in me. Mm -hmm. And I knew in that moment that I had the authority of Jesus. Right. And so I, as I was walking to her, you know, I, and, and, and let's be clear, I'm green in this area at the moment. Um, that had never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, wish I could tell you I, I was able to set her free, but I, and I wasn't that day, but I did walk to her and say, in the name of Jesus, come out of her, you know, and I shouldn't, now that I know what I know. Right. Um, but that voice, her voice would change as she talked to me. There was a moment um, where I said, where are you from? And her voice changed, eyes shifted, and she grinned at me and said, you know where I'm from. Mm. 
Um, and there were just things like that. We, the police got there and then, you know, the police would be talking to somebody else and she would turn around to me, smile, grin, give me a wicked grin and say, I've got your number. Um, you know, and so that, what I didn't know then is that, that, that was a training for me. Yeah. Like God was preparing me for what was coming in the years <laughs> to come. Trial by fire. Mm-mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so as you say, we opened our building two years ago, and all of a sudden in my rooms, you know, yes, we are literally at times casting out demons. And um, I know that may scare some people, but it's biblical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, it's amazing to me how God knows who you are when you don't have a clue who you are. Right. You know, um, it showed me the power of music that day. Mm-hmm power of the name of Jesus mm-hmm. um, I never had to pray in tongues I never had to quote scripture you know what I'm saying right, right. we get kind of religious in our mindset um, in some ways that Jesus in me was enough mm-hmm. that's what I learned that day the Jesus yeah. in me was enough right. um, and so I carry that today yeah. in the rooms Absolutely. Um, so that was the beginning yeah I um I think I've said this before. Maybe I shared it. I don't know. Um, 14. When I was 14, we went. Uh, we were, in fact, the pastor I'm with now, and the people I'm with, they're part of the group. Yeah. And we went ministering, uh, evangelizing, whatever you want to call it. And it was in Faraday, Louisiana, as a matter of fact. And, and the girl, um, the parents were concerned about it because uh, there was a voice telling her to murder her parents and oh, she wow. had everything yeah. blacked out yeah. um, and everything was covered and we went in and to the room to start praying you know she was actually levitating on the bed right now as a 14 year old once you see it mm-hmm. you, 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 don't, you, it. you don't doubt <laughs> it you don't doubt it and you know yeah and it's just like uh, being filled with the spirit man when yeah. your Holy Ghost filled and you know you have that experience i've never been hooked on crack but i would imagine that's how it is you got to have it because i know i gotta have it i gotta go where the spirit's at i can't stay long periods of time where there's no spirit moving because i I get dry and and, and, right yeah you want to be where the spirit's a lot you know allowed to you know that's that's that that's that living waters will flow out of your belly that's that whole right spirit thing you know and You know, like I said, I've been around the prophetic, and I'm quite confident with that as well. Yeah. Which you have some of that going mm-hmm. on as well. We're going to talk about all that too. I mm-hmm. just there's a lot of things we've we've come and we've talked about the music a lot of times, right? But we've never really got down to what we talk about and what yeah. we what we experience that that is uh, of the Lord, right? And Him delivering us, showing us just like you know you got shown that Jesus, the name that's enough. Oh, oh, the name of Jesus is enough. And, and you know, and can I just say this from a, we've, I've had to change, and that's probably the wrong word. You know, you have to let God pull out of you what you don't know is there. And I, I think when I started, Hunter, and we've talked about this before, you know, we've said, that, I say this often in my rooms with the ladies, music is just a tool. Um, poetry is just a tool. Um, my my main calling is is Isaiah 61, you know, preach the gospel, set the captives free, release the bound from the prisons. Um, Mark 16, 15, go and preach the gospel, cast out demons, he'll, you know, lay your hands on people. Uh, I'm learning it. I'm 52 tomorrow. Oh. Hey, happy, happy birthday, birthday Shelly. Yeah. Um, bless the Bless the Lord, because I'm I'm realizing what minute. Can I just say I'm finally realizing what ministry really is? Is that fair to yeah, say? Absolutely. Because I I think when you begin to walk in the early days of the ministry, it's about so many other things. Mm-hmm. And you know, now there's. I was sharing with you. There's a scripture God put on my heart again. I saw it years ago, but recently it's um, Exodus. Um, 2 and 11 it says now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out to his brethren and looked at their burden and um, I get kind of emotional even when I say that scripture because I'm like that's the call Shelly you know it's not music albums it's not 
books, although I've done those things. Right. Those are tools, and, and I pass those out as I see the need. But I, I guess I'm reaching the age, maybe, maybe where I have some wisdom, mm -hmm. maybe, some yeah. days, yeah. where um, I have to look outside and look at the burdens of the people. Yeah, that's good. That's you know, good. and what is what does that mean for me, or, or the church, or for us as pe as the people of God is, you know stepping outside what does that mean that's stepping outside of your four walls of your churches and seeing the burdens of people that's me stepping out of myself can let's just a whole sermon around step outside yourself right, <laughs> right? Um, because it's like not about us it's about dying to self so we can serve others Absolutely. and so i think i'm just getting to that place where i'm like ministry the fullness of ministry is whatever the people need mm -hmm. if that makes any sense at all it makes total sense now i uh, we're going to get to uh the song here probably on the next um break uh but i got one like I've, I've been uh, probably one of my favorite songs by you and it's one of the older ones too. It's I choose to believe. Is that off the first album as well? Actually, I choose to believe is off uh, the resurrection. Resurrection album. album. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that's good. I got one off the resurrection. Album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get them all. Uh, I love love that song. I love the structure of it. And uh, that's a struggle song. Is it? Yeah. That I choose to believe when I wrote it. That's so I wanted to ask you the story was, behind it. Was coming from a place of. The days when I might choose fear over the call. Yeah. Right, Lord? Right. I, but I'm choosing to believe. Yeah. Right? I choose to hope. I choose peace. Yeah. Because sometimes you got to just choose it. Right, right. Right. That's right. Um, I choose to go even if I have to go alone. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those decisions that we make. Yet, in the song, the lyrics are very vulnerable in that we all still have those struggles mm -hmm. of where sometimes I almost choose fear. Right. But Lord, if I choose fear, you know, walk me back through all the tears. Right. Where I sat and cried and said, God, strengthen me. God, you know, put me in a place of surrender again where I don't choose wrong. That's good. I, I mean, I know myself. Yeah. Can, can we just be honest? I know myself. Yeah. If I choose, I'll choose wrong. Right. So I, I have to have the help of the Holy Spirit to help me choose right. Right. So that's the, it was almost my internal struggle. Wow. Of what I was going through. <laughs> I, I, see, I, I never had, I never got that story. Yeah. I, you know, I just knew that that song was really, you know, yeah. I just love it. I, I love the whole structure of it and, and the yeah. words and everything. But wow. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. When we come back, we're going to be with Shelly Wilson again and we're going to get the new song on. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty For Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.